the title of this is The Western Oracle, We Will Tear the Roof Off the Mother. The series of the rooftop oracles originally started in Minnesota, and I've done a northern oracle there and an eastern oracle in Brooklyn, and so this is the western version. And I'm really interested in creating some sort of space for self-reclamation for the public, so I want the public to interact with everything, to climb up on top of it, to go underneath it, and kind of be the performers and complete the piece that way. Every one of them is a little site-specific, so it's adapted to the space and the people there. So the Western Oracle will have a wall on the west end around a window that is uh, full of drums. And so that's kind of my nod to the native culture and the um, Japanese psycho drumming culture here. And that is kind of the interaction or the shrine, the oracle, the ritual that is designed for this roof. So you can sound out your ritual and your reclamation. Well, I'm originally from Seattle, so this is a pretty special one for me because it's something that, you know, my folks and grand folks can come and see. Obviously, it would take me probably six months to build a roof like this by myself. And originally it was inspired by the concept of forefatherness, you know, something that's passed down through generations that you don't learn at a school necessarily. And I learned carpentry from my father. I started to take her on a roof as maybe 10, 11 years old, um, remodeled the house she grew up in. And so she was on the roof and watching me do everything. I think she knows more about roofs than I do now. <laughs> my cousin, Will, who's a local Seattleite, is my full-time carpenter. I also have my sister. My mom is coming next week. It's a whole family affair, which is kind of at the heart of the concepts of the rooftops for me, something that has passed down through generations. I like this sort of thing, actually. It's great. She has always been really inclusive. She asked me to participate in a lot of things that she's done. It's cool to be working with my dad and my sister and my cousin and uncle. And definitely a creative family. The gap between it, we could round it to a half inch. The beauty of having my cousin work for me is that he really knows what my vision is going to be. He can kind of double check the technical things and has a lot of ideas from his perspective as a contractor and carpenter. This is made very much like a regular house. The nice thing is we don't have to block out the interior and, and do the whole interior like we would. We're just going to leave it like an attic. This actually is probably stronger than most roofs because we're just building it specifically with the idea that people will be walking on it. He's really detail-oriented and I need that, you know, so I like that collaborative effort. Like it's like raising the roof involves many people. I have really nostalgic memories of like grabbing a ladder and going on top of our rooftop with a book and just kind of laying out, you know, absorbing the sun. So I wanted to kind of share that nostalgic experience with people. An oracle is someone or something that gives guidance or truths. So I've been weaving that through all of my work for a while now because I think people are looking for something outside of themselves to believe in. I want to let the viewer kind of reclaim that kind of energy for themselves. Like the oracle itself, I think the drum wall is kind of a mashup of different influences. Joseph Seymour is a native drum maker. He gave me a tutorial on how to make the drum wall. They're made out of elk hide. Like they're basically rectangles, like a Tetris of rectangles. It will look like a minimalist painting maybe, you know, like a Mondrian in, in brown and white. <laughs> also, Attila Barcha, who is my old furniture professor, has helped me figure out how to attach everything in the way that I wanted to so that it was nice and clean. Part of the art for me is bringing people together and having this kind of physical activity and investment in this concept and conversations around that that can last outside of the actual viewing of the art. 
I'm excited that the Seattle Art Museum is willing to take a risk and show a work that people can get on and play on and be a part of. Sitting on the top of it and looking out into the Puget Sound or seeing other kids like take their time and be thoughtful about how they climb up it has been really wonderful. And I feel like it's a true blessing that, that a museum can be a part of that practice. The rooftop is sort of the obvious place to be, right? It's, it's got the view, it's, it's gorgeous. But to me, it seems like the inside space really provides a space for you to have those, um, I guess the inner feelings, right? And the roof is like the outer feelings. It's a good place to meditate, I would say, and just think on more spiritual things. You know, it gets my imagination going, especially if it's not raining. <laughs> You know, when I finish a piece, it's completely up to the viewer's interpretation. So however they want to think about how they're using it works for me. I really want the viewer to bring their own frame of reference to the piece, and, and that's how it can be nebulous. That's how it can change. You come here and you ask a question, look out onto the Puget Sound and play the drums, and maybe the sound is your answer. Maybe there's something in that whole ritual that we, you have created for yourself that becomes an answer.